So end of April, brutal month. It was supposed to be the best month. It was supposed to be, statistically speaking, a historical uh, comeback for the markets, but it ended up being the opposite. Broke two new lows in the Qs or the Nasdaq, the SPY is still hanging on to their life. So what does that mean? I personally think that based on the Ellie Wave structures and counts that we've been tracking here on the channel, there might be a possibility that May will be a reversal point. Now, I'm not saying that it may lead us into new all-time highs, but I am anticipating for it to be a bounce in the market in the good month coming ahead of us. Now, why do I say that? Because one of two things can happen, all right? If our preferred count lays out, then that is likely going to find support into next week and then we head higher. If one level, which I'm using right here in the triple Qs or in the NASDAQ, if that level is breached, then unfortunately it is, um, it is time to start heading lower once more. And I'll show you those levels and those support areas that we should be looking for to the downside. So before we dive into the analysis, guys, I know that was a handful to digest at the beginning, but subscribe to the channel. Thank you for tuning in and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. As you know, it'll help this channel grow. So you guys know, and you guys are very well aware that <clears throat> I've been tracking this market in one of two ways since the COVID lows. I've been tracking this as a five wave progression into the wave three, not five ways, two, three ways up, right? One, two, and three. And then we're tracking this as the wave four. Right, so meaning that this is one, this is two, and now we're looking for the fifth wave. Okay, now at this point in time, this correction has dragged out a little too long and it's not looking too promising to pair up to its counterpart of the same degree. Okay, what do I mean by that? Corrections of the same degree tend towards equality or time, all right, magnitude and time rather. And so far, <clears throat> this has been progressing longer than expected. Now, wave one also is about to be breached by the wave four. And this is the level, this is the thing that I'm looking for. All right, this zone here, and this is my driving point, my confirmation that this count is going to be thrown into the garbage if we breach the zone. So what zone is that? The zone that I'm looking for it to hold is 303.43. Anything above that zone will still contend the fact and the idea that this market still has some hopes and some juice to the upside. Now, let me turn on the label so we can quickly discuss what that looks like. So one, two, three, W, X, and Y. Now, taking you down to the one hour time frame in this count, um, that would mean that this is the way we're looking at this, right? So out of the wave three high, right, we have W, X, and the wave Y. Now, I am not a fan of this short wave Y, but it's still not out of the question. Although we're supposed to be unfolding in three ways, this looks more of a directional five wave down. Okay, now I, back to the daily time frame. Let me just quickly draw my horizontal line to give us a guidance of to as to where we should stay above, what levels should stay above. So you can clearly see that there is no, there's not a lot of room left, right, guys? There's not a lot of room left to go. So either we we get to go, we that's it. We're, the, the low was in, right? The low was actually in here today. And we're off to the races. Otherwise, if this low is breached, 30369 rather, okay, then we have no choice but to di um, direct our attention to the alternate count. And what does that look like? I've presented this ch um, this chart to you guys several times already, and this chart will look like this, right? Out of our um, cycle degree wave four, okay, we have the wave one, and now I am looking at this as a as a ending diagonal type of pattern. All right, because if we cannot count, I mean, we could count five waves out of here, but one way to look at this too is three waves, right? We can look at this as the A wave, the B wave, and the C wave of wave one, A, B, C into the two, A, B, C into the three, A, B, C into the four, A, B, C into the five, and then we roll over into the lar you know, to the larger correction that everybody's now anticipating. So you may be asking, an ending diagonal has three subdivisions, right? Three wave subdivisions to its wave structures, and it does, all right? So that's why I'm looking at this in that perspective, okay? Otherwise, we can always look at it, right, into the five wave correction, I'm sorry, the five wave progression, and into the wave two and the zigzag, which is still valid also, but I prefer to see it in this perspective here. So the pain may continue once we breach this low. All right, the pain may continue once we reach that low. And why do I say that? Because we have targets down towards a 38.2% retracement and the 100% extension. So these two levels, the green one is an extension from the A to the B down to the C, which will be equality, right? It will be the C wave will be equal to the wave A. And that's pretty common on the zigzag. And that's what we're looking for. All right. 
and the 38.2% retracement is a common support zone for a wave two pullback. All right, so from the wave one to from the wave one low to the wave one high, you retrace and you get that zone. So we've already breached the 23.6. We did not hold that as support. At some point, we were looking for this to be support, and then we got faked out, and then we rolled over. Now it is likely that we're going to continue downwards and breach this low into these two zones of support. Now, if we zoom out into the monthly time frame, for instance. Right, and we just look at our RSI. We see that we've already we are in a zone of support. All right, and what I say, I mean, looking at this in the larger picture, in the larger scheme of things, we see that we have um, RSI seeing support at the forty-five point fifty-four area. All right, we see support down here between two thousand and three through two thousand and six. It was a bit of support here on the on 08, and then we broke below during the credit crisis. We then started rallying, and then we briefly held it, oh, held above in 2018. 2020, we made a new higher high, and then we started forming divergence. Now, that's one thing that is giving me a little bit of a headache here, because once we start forming divergence, it's always indicative of the final fifth wave, and could that be it? All right, could the markets have already topped out and rolled over? We'll yet to find out. But I don't want to get ahead of myself with that. That'll be another video for another day. So far, I just want to focus on this, right? That if we hold this support, right, from all of this zone, okay, then it is likely that our alternate account may be at play and then we're going to start heading higher. Maybe uh, we create another divergence, right? <clears throat> and that's into the wave five. Well, price action makes a new high, RSI makes a new low, and then we go, all right? And then that's it. And then the correction is here. And then we'll take it from there when that time comes. <coughs> Otherwise, back down to the uh, one hour time frame. Let's review this wave structure. And let's take a look at what, uh, how much pain we have left to go. So yesterday's video, to, to kind of backtrack here for a second, we were around this zone, right? We were around this area calling this, the video, the title of the video was Bull Trap, right? Spot the Bull Trap or can you see the Bull Trap? Something like that. So I do encourage you guys to go take a look at that video because I outlined it specifically, specifically how today would have unfolded if certain levels uh, actually held as resistance. And clearly it did, right? We found a double top here and now we're selling off. So that was indicative of a fourth wave. I just want to kind of like clarify that to you guys because the way we were looking at this was in that fact that this was a zigzag and got line of alternation was stating that the, uh, the wave four was unfolding into a flat correction. So back up to one hour time frame. Um, you know, always spot those type of um, um, trends or patterns in, in corrections because that'll often help you understand. And Ellie Wave principle, with all due respect, it's not a guessing game. All right, it takes practice and it takes it's a technique. It's a cool tool to use, like every other technical analysis out there. I just happen to this just happens to be my preferred method. All right, so if you have other preferred methods, whatever, good for you. But um, this is mine, and I encourage you guys to learn it if. Uh, I'm finding success in it. I, I love it because it helps me guide through these rough times. And I, as you can see from yesterday's video, we were able to call this correction into the way four into new lows. Anyway, sorry for the sidetrack there. So likely we'll see new lows into early next month or early May. And then we'll likely see price action come down towards um, the 290 towards the, the, three, the 288 and the triple Qs. Now, let me take you guys over to the SPY um in the spy i mean we could review our main count um, but you, it, it's the same thing as in the spy as in the queues right but here okay it's also tracking the same version of the count right and in diagonal into the final fifth wave okay so a b one two three four five of c of wave one a b c into the two right so poor comes in at the 23 now unlike the queues we haven't breached the 23.6 Okay, we haven't reached the 23.6. So that's why I'm leaning more towards this this sort of uh, wave structure because it is it is likely that we find that zone and it is in confluence with the 100% extension of A, B, all right, and C. So I am, I'm liking this area. I will look for, I will wait for the zone. It will, <coughs> excuse me, it will sort of confirm this trend line. It will, yeah, it'll start confirming it or originate it. And then we'll we'll take it from there. But if we do manage to hold this zone, 
I mean, it's game on May. We may likely start seeing a reversal, or we may just hover around here into the end of May, June, and then June we start our next leg higher into the new year. All right, guys. Um, let me take you down to the one hour time frame and let's take a quick look. Now, again, like in yesterday's video, look, I this I cannot stress this enough. Understanding patterns is extremely important in the markets, right? I mean, the news out there, everything is important. Everything is really, really important to understand the fundamentals and the economics of of, of everything that that moves markets. But it's a lot to it's a lot to digest at times, right? So often we just <coughs> focus on chart patterns and, and and what the price action is trying to let us know. So this was a, a zigzag into the wave two, which is common, right? And this was a flat, which is the guideline of alternation, which is common in the wave four. So directional correction, sideways correction. Okay, I pointed that out yesterday, and then what happened today? We ended up selling off. All right, guys. So downside support comes in a little bit over the 398 to 396, and the spot will break 400 coming into next week after Powell. Maybe I'm not sure. And again, this is just an interpretation of mine. And if we are right, hey, we'll take advantage of this. If not, we'll stay patient and we'll see what the market throws at us. All right, guys. So thank you so much. Again, if you're stuck around through this shenanigans of me blabbering through this market analysis, I just want to say something to you. I know April was tough. I know April was rough. All right. Not only you, a lot of other people or have their, their portfolios in a big drawdown because, you know, I, I have to be honest with you. I, my, my portfolio is in the drawdown as well. All right. I'm in the red for the entire year, uh, but holding strong. I'm not panic selling. I'm not panicking anything. If anything, I see this as a good opportunity to try and uh, position yourself. If you have cash on the sidelines, which you should have been doing at this point, raising cash to take advantage of these, um, of these uh sales all right because technically that's what we have we have a big market sell right now going on all right like black friday sales or i mean come on guys if you guys see a, a good tv on amazon for sale you're gonna jump all over it so why not jump all over a stock that you actually use like amazon all right and add it to your portfolio that is at a massive discount after today's uh sell-off and yesterday's earned bad earnings report does that make sense all right so don't worry about the short term don't worry about the, 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 the try to get the quick gains this is a long this is a long 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 game right this is a, a five to ten year plan here build your portfolio and in the long run you will see what happens all right guys so thank you so much for tuning in may is going to be great be excited see you guys on monday peace out